Monochromatic color schemes are derived from a single base hue or color and extended using its shades, tones, and tints. Tints are achieved by adding white, and shades and tones are achieved by adding a darker color, like gray or black. Monochromatic color schemes provide opportunities in art and visual communication design as they allow for a greater range of contrasting tones that can be used to attract attention, create focus, and support legibility. The use of a monochromatic color provides a strong sense of visual cohesion and can help support communication objectives through the use of color. The relative absence of color contrast can be offset by variations in tone and the addition of texture. We will be using these techniques. To begin, open up a new tab and type Google Drawing into the search bar. Then click on Google Drawing and it'll open up a new blank document. The first thing you need to do is put a name on your document. So type in your name in Mono City, and then don't forget to share it with me at jlapham at bostonpublicschools.org. To start your cityscape, you'll draw a series of rectangles across the blank page. Click on the shapes icon to choose the rectangle shape. Once you draw that, use the bucket icon to fill your shape with color. Don't forget, this is a monochromatic color scheme, so you need to choose one column of color to work with. And then also make the border of that shape transparent. Continue this all the way across the page using a variety of rectangle shapes and sizes um, and shades of your monochromatic color. Remember, variety is the spice of life. You can even overlap buildings or place buildings in the foreground. You should have at least six rectangles on your page. Next, we're going to set the background color. I'm gonna do a night sky, so I'm gonna go really dark on my color bay. You can right click if you're on a Chromebook or hold down control, click if you are on a Mac, and it'll pull up this screen that says background. So click on that. You can do a solid background or a gradient. I'm going to choose gradient and then go over here to custom fill and make sure that my gradient is in my monochromatic color scheme. Now you can have some fun adding all kinds of great details and texture to your artwork. I'm going to start with some stars in my night sky. So I'll go up to shapes and do a tiny little circle. So I'll draw the circle, I'll fill it with white, I'll do a transparent border. And I could draw these all over the page and go through all those steps over and over again, or I could use the copy and paste function. To copy and paste, you would use that little arrow key and go up under edit and scroll down to copy and then do the same thing, scroll down to paste and you get your star copied and pasted. Or you could use the shortcut key, which would be command C would be to copy and command V is to paste. And I'm gonna copy and paste stars all over my page. I can also select more than one star at a time to save time, so you could click on a star, and then holding down the shift key, click on a couple of different stars. So you have a group of stars that are all highlighted. Uh, go down to copy, so command C or copy, and then paste, and then you can move that group of stars around. So it saves a little bit of time. So now let's add some more detail. You can add some different tops to your buildings. So go under shapes, there's so many different shapes that you can choose from. There's no right or wrong. Use your imagination. I love this little rotate handle that's on the top of a shape. So I drew this half circle and now I'm gonna use that little rotate tool and rotate it around to give this curved top to my building. And then I'll fill it with the same color as the building itself. 
So take a look at all these interesting shapes that you could use for the tops of your buildings. You can kind of play around with them. If you don't like them, you just delete them. Um, I'm going to use this open circle here. And it looks kind of ridiculous when I put it on top of this building. But once I do the fill to match the building and transparent for my border, it makes sense. So give it a whirl. Try out a bunch of different tops to your buildings. Add a variety of windows to your buildings. Now this is really where that copy and paste function comes in super handy. If you're copying and pasting the same thing over and over again, you don't have to go through those steps of fill and border. You just copy the image that you made that you like and then paste it. And then you can even select more than one at a time, copy those and paste. It'll go a lot quicker. So I've copied and pasted a bunch of windows that go on this one building. I like the way they look, but they are overlapping the building that is in front of it. So now I want to bring that front building back to the front. How do I do that? Go up to the Arrange function up at the top, and then click on Order. And then it'll let you say Send to the back, Bring to the front. So you're going to click on um, all of those shapes that you want to bring to the front. Again, you can hold the shift key and click on a bunch of things at once or do one at a time and then just say bring to the front. You could also use the line tool to add details and texture to your drawing. So I'm going to go over here and make some windows using my line tool. So I've drawn a line and I'm going to use rotate it so that it is perfectly vertical. And then I can go and say I want to do a dashed line so you can choose what type of line you want to do and you can change the weight of your line. So I'm gonna make it a little thicker and change the color. And then I'll copy and paste that to make my windows. Add some doors to all of your buildings. And now you can also, in a monochromatic setting, use blacks and whites. Those are also considered part of a monochromatic set. So I'm gonna use some of my doors are gonna be black, some are gonna be still in that burgundy column. And don't forget when you fill a shape with color, you can do the solid color, but when you use that bucket tool, you can also go to gradient. So I'm going to go back now and change some of my ex details to be gradients, just to add a little bit more visual interest. Um, I think I'm going to go to these windows here and make those a gradient as solid fill. And also notice how I'm using that line tool to add some more details to the windows and to the tops of buildings. You could do designs on the sides of your buildings. Play around with the colors, the shapes, the lines, the line weights. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Your artwork might look something like this. I have details in my background, my middle ground, foreground, I've used lines, shapes, borders, you name it, we've done it.